I want, I want to talk to the text for a second because uh, the movie just looks and sounds. I'm so glad it was a print. Oh, my God. Yes. It was just beautiful. And uh, it's got this whole kind of like, I mean, I've been in Chicago a few times, but this Chicago is just like stamped into your memory. So talk to me about, uh, about cutting the movie together and, and shooting it. You know, we'll speak to the cinematographer first. Uh, speak, speak to me for a second, Ernie, because you, you guys have all these. Ernest Holzman, ASC. These, these very hard sources, underlighting all this beautiful black skin and primary colors, bruh. What did you do? Talk to me. Well, Ted and I first met at, a, at Nate's, Nat, uh, Nate and Al's, I think it was. And we talked about the movie. And then when we got to Chicago, he showed me some books of photographs. They were all black and white. So I, I knew that we wanted that he wanted to have a kind of a a monochromatic look to the to the film, and um, so I purposely, you know, elected to not uh, use a lot of bright colors in in the lighting, except for the reggae scene and the the stepping scene where we backlit with blue and then we backlit with red in the in the in the uh, in, in the reggae scene. And everything else was pretty neutral, and and Sean's wardrobe was pretty neutral, and the walls were pretty. Roger's walls were pretty neutral. Sean Barton, the cop. Sean B. Sean. 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 Right. There she is. There she is. There she is. <laughs> and, and then, and then, very briefly, um, when we were talking about Nina's photography, we dis discussed the possibility of opening the film with some black and white B-roll, and so since I was there. During prep, I just went out and, and did a lot of stuff with, with a production assistant myself, which I really enjoyed. And, mm -hmm. and it made it into the movie, which was really great. Excellent. And, Excellent. And, 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 I, and I will just say one thing about, I just, seeing the movie tonight was like seeing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. And I, occasionally I'd look at something and say, oh, I, I shot that. And <laughs> yes, my, you did, bro. And my, fa my favorite shot in the movie, by the way, Nia, is your close-up when, you know, Lorenz gets the call from Lisa that morning and your eye opens. Yeah, I've always loved that close-up of you. And Thank you. <laughs> well, let me just say quickly, uh, just to add quickly onto that, Ernie came to me through Jeremiah Samuels. We didn't know each other. But what impressed me about Ernie was that he had, well, he had a TV background, which I knew I was going to need for because the schedule was very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And he was he started his career as Jordan Cronenweth's assistant. And so he was the AFI intern on Blade Runner and had assisted Jordan uh, for on commercials and movies throughout the wow. 1980s. And so I knew that okay, well, we can find there's a common language there that we knew we could get to where we wanted to, you know, get to in terms of the lighting and what we had to do with the photography and cast with all black people all different range of skin tones. The thing you have to keep in mind, most people don't recognize this, is that you go see a mainstream Hollywood movie in the days prior to the DI, to the advent of the DI, and all of the white skin tones are pretty even. They're all pretty much the same, uh, or at least that's how the, the Kodak's negative renders them. Even though white people in real life have different tones, in the movies, they tend to get evened out and it's pretty similar. Whereas this whole range of, of skin tones was going to be very challenging. Yeah, I'm caramel. You know what I mean? And so anyway, <laughs> so right, exactly. So we had to, so Ernie and I had to work that part of it out and figure out what we we're gonna do. But that's, uh, and, the, and I should say finally, the photography at the beginning of the picture, with the exception of one shot, is mine. All of that black and white is uh, Ernie shot himself. I, I, I have. And, I and by the way, Ted, yeah. you know, wanting to shoot the film on the slowest f speed possible, right. Ted wanted really rich, uh, really fine grain. Right. So we shot it at ASA 100, and so you know, it just added to the challenge of, of the project, right. which I embraced. Ernie, but my grandma would say you are anointed, bruh, because the skin in this movie is just so good. So, so the only person up here who I've met before this evening is uh, Maisie Hoy, who edited this film, because, and I, I'm going to just speak for like 30 seconds, the editor of Moonlight, Joy McMillan, Academy Award nominee Joy McMillan, assisted Maisie on like seven features before coming with me to make Moonlight. So Maisie, I've had martinis with you. I had no idea you cut this movie. Talk to me about it. 
Well, you probably didn't wait till the end of the movie. <laughs> I was probably making out when the credits roll. That's why. <laughs> so how, how did you and uh, how did you come come to link up with Theodore and, and, and cut the film? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was Nick, Nick Wexler. I think yeah. Ted's got. This it was film. Nick. Nick. I didn't have anybody on my list. I didn't know what to do. Nick said Nick Wexler had produced the player that was directed by Robert Altman. She had cut the player. Had worked in. Bob's cutting room, her whole career, started on McCabe and Mrs. Miller. And in fact, fun fact, Maisie actually, as a young girl, young woman, plays one of the Chinese prostitutes in McCabe and Mrs. Miller and has a nude scene. In the hot tub. Wow, Gotta go look that up. Going to watch 19, that tonight. We're going to look that up tonight. <laughs> I've always love the editing. Always love the editing of Love Jones. I'm looking that up tonight. Amazon.com. I think I'm going to need Lance. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So <laughs> the fact that she had worked for Robert Altman <laughs> caught my attention because I knew that for the scenes with the group, I wanted to play with this sort of uh, overlapping dialogue that Altman, I kind of stole the technique from him. I was very influenced by MASH and some of the other pictures he had made. Exactly. So I needed somebody who technically understood how to do that, who had done that for the guy who invented it. So that was a part of it. The fact that she was a woman was a part of it as well because I knew that, okay, it's a romantic thing and I'm just me. I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of dudes in the cutting room trying to figure out, is, is this working emotionally or not? So I, I felt she'd be helpful that way as well. So now you can, but that's how she came. Did, did it come Doug. together quick or did it come together, did it take you time to find the film? Because some of the match cutting is just extraordinary. Talk to me about in the edit room, how quickly did it come together? Well, actually you came came together quite quickly because Ted knew what he wanted, you know, and he shot two cameras. So all that overlapping dialogue was easy to edit. And when I was talking to Ted, you know, I told him, I said, you know, um, I'm not afraid of cutting a movie where there's overlapping dialogue mm -hmm. because usually, you know, when you're on, on the set, the sound guy would say, no, oh, no overlapping dialogue, please. And then you have to invent it which doesn't feel natural at all. And so what I love about this movie, I mean, honestly, I haven't seen it in 20 years, is that the, the naturalness of everybody, you know? And my favorite scene is the cab ride. And I'll tell you why. You know, because I, I go and I do seminar, you know, teach at uh, different schools, and I use that as an example of comedy. Yep. Wow. Brilliant timing. Brilliant. And, and and I remember when we were getting notes from the studio, they wanted me to cut to Nina and stay on her. And I go, and then when we came back, I said to Ted, I said, you know, I don't agree with that because it really is about the reaction of Lisa. <laughs> you know, she sells it and then at the end you go to Nina and it's like the biggest laugh, you know, of the whole movie. And I didn't realize how funny the whole movie was. <laughs> Fucking hilarious, yes. <laughs>